Okay, first of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation for me. It's a great honor to speak uh, for our colleague from Slovenia. Uh, I was in Slovenia back in uh, December 2018. Uh, I, I gave a speech about access to geological data and 3D models. And I, I don't want to repeat this, this talk. So uh, I will try to do something different today. And first of all, I would like to congratulate for this very important anniversary. Uh, 25 years is something, and really I admire what Slovenia is doing. As I said, I will do something very different, or some with some difference, and I will start with this figure, which I like it. Uh, Maslow hierarchy of needs. Every society, every human being has expectation. And at the end of my talk, we could get together and try to answer to this question, what will be the contribution of geology, for example, for physiological needs, safety needs, love, belonging, esteem, or self-actualization? I guess that gives the a line for my, for my talk, and I think it's important at the beginning to talk with something broader than only stratigraphy, tectonics, and so on. So I will enlarge my talk to something broader. And to enlarge this, I will try to follow this menu. I hope you have a good lunch, and I had a good lunch before. And that's the topics that I want to treat with you. So first of all, I will talk about geology in Switzerland. I won't have the time to explain the complexity of the geology, but I will explain the scene uh, of geologists in Switzerland and uh, the work that we're doing, basically. The second point, we'll talk about geodata. And uh, as GeoZS Slovenian are expert on data management and information management, I choose two topics just to explain the, this geodata matter. Uh, and I don't want to repeat my talk as I saw two years ago. Then I will switch to geoinformation. Geoinformation for me, it's the exploitation of data in 2D and 3D products. And then here again, we will talk about 2D geology and 3D modeling. What's the state of the art in our small country of Switzerland? But the most of, the, of my talk will talk about geo-knowledge. We'll talk about application, what we can get from stratigraphy, tectonics, for the broad, in a broader sense, for the use of society. And I will end up with the special things on geo-wisdom. We will talk about strategy, strategical goals, and the link with political uh, goals. And at the end, I will give you some conclusion. I hope it will fit to your interest. So let's start with geology. Geology in Switzerland, unfortunately, I would be pleased to explain the complexity of our geology in Switzerland. You see all this fault and, and stuff uh, coming from the Helvetic naps or the basement of crystalline, uh, the cover of crystalline basement. But let's concentrate on the right, on the right side here where well, you have basically the three big units of Switzerland, of the geology of Switzerland. On the north, the Jura chain, a folded chain made of limestone and clay and marl and so on. In the middle of the country would be the Forland Basin, uh, Molas Basin, which is more regulated, uh, flat bedded of sandstone and shale and so on. And at the southern part start the complication with first the pre-Alps here, and then the Helvetic naps, which are covering the external uh, crystalline basin. And on the very south, that we are coming in the Penninic and Austro-Alpine unit, uh, which are maybe familiar to you in Slovenia. So that's basically the geology of Switzerland. Unfortunately, I have no time to explain more about this geology. That might be the topics of another talk. Okay. That was, sorry, that was basically the map that you didn't see. Okay, the three maps. Okay, the Jura, the Forland Basin, the Prealps here with the Helvetic Naps, uh, Crystalline Basin, and the Southern Part. 
Switzerland, we are not that far from Slovenian, but uh, we are talking about 42,000 uh, square kilometer uh, extension, more than 200 kilometer north, south, and west is almost 350 kilometer. We are in the middle of Europe, bordered by Germany, Liechtenstein, Italy, and France. And again, the main topi topography are made of Jura on the north, 10% of the superficy, the plateau, Forland Basin, and the Alps, which take more than 60% of the territory. Also, very shortly about my country, uh, 8.5 million inhabitants, more than 20% coming from abroad. We have a couple of uh, fairly large cities. Zurich will be the biggest one, uh, Geneva, Basel, Lausanne, and Bern. If you have the chance, uh, <laughs> You will be invited, please, to travel to Switzerland. Okay, that's enough for tourism. Let's jump on geoscience. And I set up this figure just to explain to you if you want to be a geologist, where you can be formed. So we have seven university and two ETH where you are in the position to obtain a bachelor or a master degrees. And uh, I also plot this since 90 to 2018 or 20. That's about the uh, well, the archive of all the students who achieve master degree or bachelor degree or PH PhD degree. So we can say we are around here, 2018. That's something like more than 120 person can achieve yearly and master degree. And among this, above this, we are giving more than 20, around 30 PhD yearly among these things. Also interesting, the background or the topics of the professor or lecture at university. And you see two, almost two thirds of the professor or lecture are here to gain new information, new data, uh, develop new idea or research. Some, a, a few amount, 5% are interested by geo asset or specialized. Also 5% are interested by geo infrastructure and geo resource makes almost 20%. That's a new topic which is gaining in importance. So that's the background uh, of students that can get in Switzerland. I jump with another overview of how many geologists are working in Switzerland. We count almost 1,500 geologists, which are uh, two thirds, that mean almost 1,000 person of geologists are working for private company. We have around 300 private bureau or company which are working uh, in the market. Then we can say that in the academy we'll have 200 full-time position, a lecturer and professor. And the administration at the federal or at the cantonal level will give you 300 persons. That's more or less the, the, the repartition of, of the geologists. And again, uh, among the federal and the cantonal administration, there are different tasks. I lead the Swiss Geological Survey, but there are other unity or units in the, in the administration which are dealing with geology. And uh, you see here, uh, important part I devoted to geo asset, geo data. That's our main task here in by Swiss Topo and geo resource, geo waste, and geo infrastructure. That's at the federal level. At the cantonal level, it's more or less the same distribution. And uh, the what's are doing the private company? They are working for geo resource, geo waste, geo infrastructure. That's more or less <coughs> the duty they have. Now I will explain shortly uh, on which organization we are linked. So our Swiss Geological Survey are part of the Federal Office of Topography. And uh, I would say that Federal Office of Topography, I call it all in one. That means we are starting from remote sensing very high. We have also two airplanes to take data and so, so on. So we are starting at the atmosphere dealing with topography and also geodesy. Then we come down at the surface 
with uh, more uh, uh, work also done for cartography. And then that's where the geology start doing the geological mapping. If we go any to the shallow subsurface also, our, our, our um, office are also involved with some uh, documentation of all the man-made objects in the shallow uh, subsurface, so as well as the geology, raw material, I will come later on. And then uh, at the deep underground, we are involved also as the geology. So you see 400 employees, a lot of trainees, uh, many people are working part-time and also one third of women. That's the general view of Swiss Topo. Swiss Topo is changing a lot. We used to be as the Federal Office of Topography, which is linked at the Federal Department of, of uh, Defense um, and uh, Sport. So we are li linked with the Army. So uh, we developed uh, this year new vision for Swiss Topo, not only looking for our own uh, uh, topographic or geological map, but also to for changing society. And that's also the topic of my talk. So geoscience for changing society. And we are involved with digital transformation, security, defense, mobility, land ownership, economy, education, and so on. So that's the vision of Swiss Topo to go out and be interested by a changing society and provide services and experience. Now I'm focusing on my Swiss geological survey, a small survey, and I put this two 3D uh, model. The on, on your left, that will be what we call it, the subsurface and the shallow subsurface, uh, dealing from uh, well the border of the, the the border between um, the hard rock and the loose rock and so on. So that's a part of our activity. And on the right, you have also a block diagram will go from the surface to four kilometers depth. That will be the deep underground with other activity. So on the shallow, on the subsurface and shallow, we are dealing with uh, protection of natural hazard, but there we don't have the need, the lead. We also looking for mobility in the subsurface, mineral resources, also some kind of energy transition. And if I'm looking on the right, we are more interested by deep rep repository for radioactive waste and also all the energy transition with deep geothermy, CCS, and so on. So that's more or less our activity. And the organization of our survey reflected also this activity. If, I, if you look at our, our chart here, so we have the surface and the subsurface, shallow subsurface, dealing with geological map, 2D data, 3D shallow model, and the raw materials topics here. In the middle, we have the rather deep surface, that means geoenergy and 3D deep model, as well as all the data management. And on the right, it's a specific topics for us. We are in charge of the rock laboratory for the research on deep geological disposal. And I will come back there. So 50 employees, a high rate of education with almost 20 PhD and so on. That's the survey. So we are, we are a small survey compared to Slovenia. I guess I have heard that you're more than 100 person. Okay, that's the first part, geology in Switzerland. I will skip now to the first chapter on geodata. And I, as I said, I don't want to talk too much about data management, uh, data standard, and so on, because you are much, uh, much in advance to us. We developed our own solution. But what is interesting in our country or in Switzerland, that's the data, the data management are interested also the politician. And I would like to make some link with between our survey and the economy or our survey and the politician. And the first, unfortunately, it's in French, sorry. It's a very recent decision of our of federal parliament, which, which asked us to modify the law on geoinformation 
to uh, emphasize the transfer between the data between the private company and the government, uh, cantonal and federal um, authorities. So uh, we started the consultation of, of the new modification of the law. And uh, we are not that far, it will take some time. Uh, we are at the end of the consultation and we had work to do just to take care of all the position we Welsh made. We, were have, we have more than 70 different position coming from politician, from private company or for authority. And we'll take care of this um, consultation just to modify our law. Okay, that's uh, the link between geodata and politician. Again, I'm coming back to a slide I present two years ago. We define geologic data quite different from geological information with different aspects. So for us, we make a differentiation between primary geological data and secondary interpreted geological information. The second will be protected because it's an intellectual property right. The first, we're thinking that the primary geological data should be accessible as open, uh, open government data. If they are produced by the government, if they are produced by the private company, uh, we should handle with this just to um, diffuse this information. And uh, again, that's also the same slides. Again, for public data, open access. For private data, no access with restriction and, and so on. But um, I think that's according to our regulation and that's the things we want to modify. Also for geodata, we developed our own data model. Uh, we have our own standard of Swiss topo for geology, for 2D geology, 3D, for boreholes and so on. And now we want to make this data model com compatible with understand other standards like Interlis, GeoCML and so on. That's a work to do. We started last year and we still have two years just to modify our uh, data model just to be online with Interlis and GeoCML. Geo okay, about geodata, that was something that I want to say, but I want to portray a, a pilot project that we, okay, sorry, another, another politician intervention of our federal uh, parliament that was back two years ago, and the, this intervention of politician asked for a digital transformation of all the cantonal archives. We have 26 cantons and all these cantons have their own archives and most of these archives are made of paper. And the government or the federal parliament asked that we make this digital transformation from paper to digital uh, file. And uh, we obtained, well, our survey obtained quite a lot of money just to make this not, not alone, but with the canton and with the private company to make this chain, to this jump between uh, analog and digital world. That was a recent de decision in my uh, this year. Okay, and we intend to make this if we put these things like here. Unfortunately, it's in German, but you can understand fairly. The paper would be here, the archives in paper of paper. Then we will jump to PDF, then resorting and so on, and to produce some, uh, some data for everybody. So that will be the first step. And then the second step, the, the true digital transformation will be made at different level by the canton or by the federal government. We are talking about more than 250,000 files, 7 million of pages, and five terabytes. That's the work that we want to achieve uh, for the next years. So again, geodata, federal government, politician, I think everything is linked. Now, I will make a small excursus on the, uh, the uh, translation or the, well, we are producing quite a lot of data according to GIS software. And we observe that it's kind of, see, uh, um, um, a brought um, a change between the GIS world and the, the world of AutoCAD and BIM. So uh, 
uh, building information modeling. So we started an innovation project, which is called Georbim, that was two years ago with partner, partner from the private industry, for the university and so on. And we, the idea is to make available our, our geological data for the world of the building, for architect, from engineer and so on. And I will start, uh, I will show you um, a small video, I hope it will work, to see how far that's our building in, uh, in Bern when I'm living. And I, I, I'll show you the, the boreholes information, which is made of USC classification or also interpretation of sedimentology. And we want to make this information available for all the building industry. So that's why we start our project. And here you see uh, uh, that's interpretation of this borehole information. But until now, to our knowledge, there were no platform to exchange this information, geological cross section and so on, just uh, to correlate between boreholes and so on. And really that's the first attempt just to make the geology accessible also for civil engineer or architect. Okay, that's the main purpose of uh, Project GeolBeam. Okay, and again, BIM, Building Information Model, looks like a, a standard. It will be a standard, it's become a standard in Switzerland. In UK and Germany, it's already a standard. It's also a requirement of the government that all the new building must be according to the BIM standard and so on. And until now, the world of geology and geotechnic was not covered by this uh, different standard. So we decided to make this project GeoBIM. Again, uh, we are here, so we have many research. We did many research before scope definition. We end up the use cases, and we reported uh, the next spring and also. Uh, next year, we'll have all kind of education concept just to teach uh, our, our private company just to work with these new uh, uh, tools. And again, that's already the two uh, um, reports which were uh, presented is only in, in German, but we might translate in, uh, in English. So the first has to do with geology and the second has to do with the BIM method, the EFC. Uh, standard, which is the link between GIS and BIM. That's the first publication. And among the uh, many applications that we were ab able to, ma to make, we chose three applications. The first was done for tunneling, the second was excavation pit, and the third for landslide. We didn't cover all the application, all the needs, but we started with these three applications to see the flexibility uh, of this uh, um, methodology. Okay, again, we have to integrate many measurement, boreholes, cross-section, 3D, model, voxel surface, and so on. And again, the idea input is just to put all the, all the geological data at different standard, uh, well, with different standard, in the in these things to end up with some EFC standard which can be used by engineer and architect. So that's the first attempt. It's a fairly hard task, but we are quite well on the way. That's the idea according to the different uh, format, Excel, uh, DXF and so on, uh, according to the input and the output, EFC space building and space and so on. So that's how far we are for three uh, case study. I will end up here with the idea of uh, geodata. Then we will skip to geo information. Just don't go, don't forget to go to the field unless you will have some problem. Okay, so geo information for us it's 2D and 3D. It's already product and. Uh, uh, we are producing a geological map at the scale 125,000. We are almost over. It took us quite a long time, almost 100 years, to cover, to have a full coverage of Switzerland at the scale 125,000. But we are expecting until 2030 that the work will be done. 
Again, uh, we are talking about geological map of the years 1930, and uh, the, la the latest one will be in 2030. So we have to combine, compare, and harmonize all the things. That's the task of the project GeoCover. So we are here, and uh, we are jumping to the next step, which will be the, the standardization of all the geometry, all the vector tile, before we had to do some harmonization on stratigraphy and so on. It was a huge work, but we are almost done. And at the end, what will be available, at the end, you will be in the position to access with a 2D or 3D viewer to this information. And then I will show you uh, how far we are with 2D uh, uh, viewer, just to make uh, you attention that we on our internet map geoadmin we have more than 25 million visitors per year but it, there are 700 layers it's not only geology but a lot of people are coming on a 2d viewer but i will show you let's go let's be let's go to zermatt you have been to you have heard about zermatt and so on and i will try to show you um Zermatt here, takes some time, but that's the access to, to uh, okay. Okay, here, okay, here you can, I hope you can see that will be the Matterhorn. So with our viewer, that's not so easy. With our viewer, you can, you can travel and, uh, and uh, okay, let's, let's do it like this. Okay, you can uh, visit our, our geology, and I think this 2D and 3D viewer it's a wonderful way just to make the geology available for everybody. Okay, so that will be uh, this idea. You can also click here to have information about the age of the of the rocks and so on. And I think that's a very powerful tool. Okay, I hope I'm not on. Okay. So um, now I want to jump from 2D to 3D, and then I will show you uh, what we are doing. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so we start a project with the city of Geneva, and we model with the with the voxel model all the subsurface of one quartier, one part of the of the Geneva area with all the the lines, the pipeline, and so on, uh, water, electricity, and so on. You can also see all the the boreholes, which are harmonized, more than eight thousand boreholes, and also. Uh, the geometry of those boreholes, how deep they are. From there, you can construct a geological cross section, and also all this violet, purple stuff are the, the geothermal energy. So it gives you an idea of the complexity of the underground, and it will go any further. I think in the next year we will be confronted to a very big problem of land use planning in the subsurface. And I'm pretty sure that the geological survey can perform a lot of things just to, to help the planner just to make a proper way of the use of the underground. Now we will enlarge coming from Geneva to the uh, Foreland Basin, that's the project GeoMall, where we compile also all the geophysical data and the deep boreholes and so on to end up with the two 12 uh, layer models give you an idea of the geometry of the underground with some a couple of cross section the color will be for example the blue will be for the mom and so on and then we can put other attributes like temperature stress field uh, porosity and so on so that's another step and which is very useful for the carbon capture and storage or for the geothermal use of the deep underground. 
So that's uh, that's the result of a big project, GeoMall, uh, which was done also with France, uh, Germany, I think Slovenia also, or Italy, and uh, we we were responsible for the Swiss part of this. Then we will go out from this uh, Forland basin and we will go jump to our rock laboratory. Uh, Swiss Topo or Swiss Geological Survey are in charge of our beautiful rock laboratory uh, by the way of the highway here. That's the safety uh, tunnel of the highway. And we developed there many devices, many measurements just to understand the behavior of the opalinous clay and uh, to see if this clay is able to cope with some radioactive waste deposit and so on. That's the idea. And uh, over there, we have more than 50 experiments which are uh, running now with more than 20 uh, organizations of 12 countries. And we are extended our expertise now uh, with CCS. We're trying to make some carbon capture and storage, not only a radioactive waste deposit. So it's a wonderful uh, way uh, just to understand the, the behavior of the different level uh, layer of geological layer uh, with the depth. And then to uh, this import, this is important for the society. That's only the, the day when we enlarge the new gallery with 600 more things. Okay, now it's an overview of all the, the geological data, uh, 3D geological based model that we have at our disposal. So as I, I repeat our GeoMall project with these 12 horizons uh, I present, we are extending this model to the north, to the model of the Jura, which is a more complicated geology, fault and uh, all kind of this problem. We have also a beautiful uh, 3D model of Eigermann Jungfrau here, this true, uh, which is also very complicated in the Alps. Uh, of course, around of rock laboratory, we need a 3D model just to understand basically the geology. That's all the geological base model. From those models, we is to step uh, further we translate this information of stratigraphy, tectonics, and so on in other parameters. For example, the geomole is made, yet uh, it's another layer of temperature. As I said, porosity, permeability, stress field would be the, the extension of this model. We have also all kind of small regional model working with voxel. I present you the case of city of Geneva, but we have many in Alpine region, we have many small, uh, small size uh, geological model at the regional scale. The idea is not to provide the full coverage. That's the task of the cantonal authority, but we are developing those models. And also we are not only developing model, we are also uh, proposing some services and uh, different services. For example, we have uh, important task here uh, in the area of Bern, we had an explosion of munition, uh, which is stocked and mixed with uh, uh, some rock avalanche materials. And then we have to clean this, this area and we provide you a 3D geological model just to help the authority in line with research and in line with the private company, just to extend, uh, to, to make a proper clearance work of this uh, pol polluated site. That's also a service that we offer. Uh, as I said, the extension of Geomol toward the north will go to the project we call uh, NGM Jura with a fairly complicated geometry with trust and rent and faulting and so on. And that's the task of our next, uh, next years. Okay. Enough for geo information, then I will jump to geo knowledge. I hope you're still around. And I think that's a, a subject that I really like to present because that's the transfer of knowledge of geoscience for the society, for the industry, for them. And I will start with a very well known uh, figure, 
which is made uh, of the sustainable development goals, uh, talking, for example, for geothermal energy with the different uh, sustainable development goals, 1, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13. And talking about geothermal energy, we are talking about shallow or deep geothermal energy. That's also the case for Switzerland. And I will show you in a couple of slides what we are doing. First of all, our survey is not involved to exploit this, this resource. We are involved to make available all the geological data for the planner, for the civil engineer, or just to develop a project. So we are involved in the feasibility study as well as the collection on the prospection and exploration. We are, that's our main task. Uh, so we set up a website just to show the state of the art of different projects which are abound in, the, in work, in development and so on, with different, with different documentation for all the project, which is usable for everybody. Uh, recently, very recently, uh, last month started a very important exploration campaign, 3D seismic, in the city of Geneva, with more than 20,000 geophone, a big hassle and so on. And we are we are not leading this thing, but we are also taking care of the data management of all these data which are coming, and it's very interesting uh, task. And uh, by law, that's the new law, new federal law for energy, our Swiss Geological Survey, that means Swiss Topo, is responsible for two tasks on geothermal energy. First, I want to repeat that the federal government is giving an awful lot of money for the development of geothermal energy in Switzerland. And uh, our government are covering 60% of all the prospection on exploration costs. 60%. Yearly, that's represent more than 150 million Swiss francs just for exploration and prospection. And many projects are on the line. So the, the project coming from the private company, they end up at the cantonal level or at the federal level. The, it's another organization, federal level, uh, the Federal Office of Environment, which are in charge of the finance and so on. And then this demand will come to uh, staff, to, to expert group, and we are part of the expert group just to make feasibility analyze of this project, then can be financed and go. That's the first task of us, part of the expert group. The second task, which is also very important, we are in charge of all the data management. And as I said, all the data will end up to Swiss Topo, to Swiss Geological Survey. And we have six months, well, after six months, we want to uh, collect this, uh, upgrade our 3D models, and then publish this data. Not the interpretation, but the primary data, which make it available for everybody. That's the second task that our survey is doing. That was for geothermal. Again, the link between geo knowledge, geology, and politician. Uh, again, it was also this year in June that the federal government decided to accept a motion which asking a, a, a new exploration of the underground in Switzerland. We don't know how much it will cost. We don't know uh, where should we should we go. But the idea is just to go any deeper and to provide a lot of data for private company and just to develop more geothermal or CCS in Switzerland. That's a new decision. And again, uh, that was the state of the art of seismic and deep boreholes until 2000, subsurface data. And since this new law on uh, new federal law on energy, uh, we end up with very new activity. That's all the red and blue and green. For example, this is very active zone. Here is linked with the uh, deposit of uh, radioactive waste deposit. Uh, it's exploration there. And again, the city of Geneva, uh, Canton Vaux, there will more next in, in, in spring, there will be new project here in 
So we are expecting a lot of new uh, geological data which will be available for everybody. Energy transition again is made of materials. In Switzerland, we are not that keen. We are rich in poor uh, metals and so on. So we don't have those um, very rare met metals, but still we do have other materials which are important for the construction infrastructure. And again, here our Swiss geological survey is active, not for the prospection, but just to, we, we help the private company to develop their own 3D models. Uh, that's a project in the area of Bern, for example, working with Voxel. But the main task of a Swiss geological uh, survey is to set up a compilation of where the material, where the resources are, and actually where the reserves are, and where the, we are producing different types of raw materials. So to give an overview of the, the place, the volume, and so on, and that's typical the task of a survey for us at the national scale. Again, here you end up with the production and also the demand here and so on. And uh, it's very important to have an overview of the consummation and also the product which is available. Another knowledge which is important for the society is in the radioactive waste deposit. Switzerland has five nuclear power plants. We will shut, them, shut down there until 2030. But still, we have more or less 100 uh, cubic meters of radioactive waste that we, we should deal with. And the idea in our rock laboratory is to study if the opalinous clay is available to absorb these materials for almost one million years. So we are doing all kind of, all kind of research on this uh, opalinous clay, just to be sure that for many years or many thousand or many, almost one million years, this clay materials will hold uh, this, this radioactive waste. Okay, so we are working with characterization of opalinous clay pilot project and also development of new technology. And again, that's the scale. That's almost, that's one million years. So we, are do, th we do think that the radioactive waste deposit will be very active for the first 10,000 years. So we have to find a way or barrier just to prevent contamination of groundwater or of the air to, um, through this radioactive waste deposit. And then it will be a small decay of this radioactivity. And again, we should provide some safe infrastructure. The idea is to dig 600 meters down and make some uh, gallery just to uh, compile all these materials for many, many years, okay? That's radioactive waste. Another very important stuff which is developing in Switzerland is the carbon capture and storage. Uh, again, uh, we are polluting the planet and we have to deal with the CO2, the carbon di dioxide, and Switzerland, well, actually, we are producing something like 50,000, uh, 15, mi uh, 15 million tons of CO2. And the idea is to reduce this, this production. Uh, but still, we have to, to deal with these materials. And uh, again, in our rock laboratory, we are trying to understand the behavior of also this opalinous clay, uh, just, just not to stop to capture and storage the, the, the clay, but to be a layer, a layer, important layer, just to prevent the contamination of the diffusion of the CO2 with the surface. Also, we are interested by the linkage around the, the boreholes and also the behavior of tectonic fault with the leakage of CO2. That's the thing. Again, about knowledge, knowledge important for everybody, for the society, and uh, a different scale. I will start with the project, which I think absolutely great. We are not, we don't have the lead, but we help a lot. The idea is to couple uh, wine and rocks, and we help to produce a beautiful 
uh, book which was sell it's more than 10,000 copy which were already sell in German and French and this idea that's the theoretical part and we have also 13 guidelines just to visit Switzerland and to understand the correlation between different type of grapes different types of wine and a very simple geology the society are not interested by a very complicated geological legend they are they will understand what is limestone what is sandstone what is uh, marls or clay and so on very simple geology and the correlation between simple geology and wine which is very interesting so that's the, this these things and we also try to correlate the flavor of wine, milled acid, tannin, with the different clay, limestone, and sandstone, the behavior or the transformation of the grapes to wine according to the, to the wine. And at the end, the production of onological map, a very simple geological map, I would say, in 13 or 15 uh, layer, not uh, 200 different uh, layer. Very simple, just to explain the correlation. We produce from this uh, hiking map, just help the society to discover the grapes, the wine, and the geology. We are also present in different uh, uh, places which are open for the public. And again, make the geology simple. As I say, a politician understand three colors, the society might understand more or less 10 colors just uh, uh, the rest is too too difficult to understand so make make geology simple for everybody that's also our topics and the very new things which was very for me a surprise but it was accepted the new 200 swiss bank notes is full of geology okay for example we can convince the the creator or the designer just to be interested by the geology and the time scale as of the time scale, unfortunately, it's not readable here for you, but it starts with the big bang with the quaternary, and it, it's on our Swiss bank note. I would have copyright, so I will be very rich, you know. <laughs> and the other things would be this figure, which replay uh, the, the surface of Earth at the end of Cretaceous. So we are very pleased just to be chosen. They choose geology to be on front of the Swiss bank note. And my last, my last slides on geo knowledge has to do with the fairly new experience on Geodata Lab. I hope it will work. Let's try. We open a Geodata Lab. Uh, and here you can see Swiss Topo our building and uh, the idea is provide for school for everybody uh, for the society a way to understand a very easy way what is the geological data uh, what is the data ge topographical data and so on and you see here geology is very present uh, eigenmann schumfrau that's geology so it's access to 2d and 3d geology with 3D modeling and so on. That's the geology of of the Swiss uh, well, part of the Swiss Alps, and the people can can work and play with those things, understand, make slides and so on in a very creative way. And I think it's interesting just for everybody to understand the relation between. Uh, the data, uh, the 2D, 3D, and so on. I think that's the, we should develop more and more. Uh, or again here, to see some, some pipeline under the, the mountains, which give you an idea of the geometry and so on, which gives some very strange uh, display looking at the people. Okay, so. Okay, now last last things, and I will be brief. Geo wisdom or geo strategy. So we started from data to information to knowledge, and now I want to show you the 
the very big importance of geology for the society. And I start with the Switzerland carbon neutral by 2050 and geology. See, that's all the measure that our federal government wants to do. And you see what is uh, around the, the, the red stuff here. It's correlated very strongly with geology. See, storage in Switzerland, 3 million ton of CO2 per year or geothermal energy or 1.5 million heat pumps or cement chemical plants. Geology has a very big important for the carbon neutral. And I think in Slovenian is the same. And we start to study, for example, for the negative emission technology, we start to, to guess what will be the capacity of our deep underground to cope with the injection of uh, CO2. So the first reading that was uh, 2019 is we do think that it will be 52 million ton of CO2. Uh, that means for us, it's more or less 10 to 20 years of production, okay? So we start a new ex uh, exploration of the Swiss underground for this. That's the first. The second, I'm start, now I'm not talking only of geology, but I will enlarge and I will talk about the underground. And the underground is really very rich. That's the new frontier. And that's the new frontier for a lot of resource. For example, raw materials, that will be the shallow subsurface, geoenergy, we already talked, Groundwater, we didn't talk that much about groundwater, you are expert on it, and also space for uh, infrastructure. That's also very important, tunnel for, for um, in, the, in the underground. And again, this, this resource space, groundwater, geoenergy and raw materials are also connected with so big mega trends. And, now we're trying to understand the, the behavior or the, the link between digital transformation or mobility and groundwater, energy transition and geoenergy, climate change, raw material. So the idea this year and next year, we try to really understand the mechanism of the system of this resource of the underground with the big trends of the society. Again, that's trend of the society, mobility, urbanization, and so on. And we started first to compile what's the need, what's the need, for example, for storage, CO2, we say 3 million ton uh, yearly, or for radioactive waste deposit, would be here, uh, 9,000 cubic meter, very high, very ra uh, high radioactive deposit and so on, or also for other, for energy, for example, we are talking about terawatt or for water, groundwater need, and so on. So that's the first reading of the needs. And the idea is just to couple the needs with the protection, the protection of groundwater. You come from Slovenia, cast is the big stuff, and so on. So we are really trying to analyze the coupling of those things with different mega trends here. And this is very interesting also for the parliament. And again, the federal parliament is very, very, very interested by the, the underground in Switzerland. There are many motion and interpolation and whatever, uh, just to deal with the underground. And then the federal uh, government, that's mean our organization, our other office should give some answer to this, uh, this uh, should give some different answer of these different topics. And the first answer that we want to, say, to make is to develop a new underground strategy for Switzerland. And we are expecting that the first draft of the paper will be available by the end of next year. And uh, we already start with the vision. The underground is known. Uh, we want to use for present and future generation. We do know that in the underground is limited renewable capacity. When it's used, it's almost first, co first come, first serve, and so on. So the idea is to couple with this and also guideline holistic knowledge coordination, so on. So the development will be just to produce a strategical paper for the government, for the cantonal authority, just to be sure that they're making the proper land use planning in the underground. That's a very important task. 
I'm at the end. And I want just to repeat for me critical issue in geology. That's almost a repetition of my talk. And again, geology or geoscience research is also coupled with public interest and sustainable development. Again, access to water, min providing minerals, energy resource decarbonization, uh, communication, the risk with geohazard or other industrial hazard, engineering the subsurface, and also for us, the safe geological disposal of radioactive waste. For me, that's the summary of my conference. And you see, we are far away, very far away, for the boundary between Cretaceous and, and tertiary, or uh, the nanoplankton NP2, and so on. And so we that's really the exploitation of all the data, all the information toward the need of the society. And I think that we have a very important role to play. And again, I'm coming back to my first slides. If I summarize this, I think geology is very strong to couple with physio physiological needs. Also on safety needs, I think we have a very important role to play. I think in natural hazard, the understanding of env environment and so on, or also safety needs for radioactive waste deposit. And there are other stuff may, which are maybe not so popular, but I think uh, recognition, strength, freedom, and also a comprehensive uh, understanding of the earth. And I think that's also the basic contribution of geology. And my last, my last slides, I would recommend that all the geologists must change, must change of activity. Uh, for example, I'm at the end of my career. I will end up my career next year. I will retire. But I must say I change activity in the geological world, in the internal world, almost every five years. And that's important to have a broad network. So you understand the things in a broader sense. And I think that's the weakness of our of, of, of job that we are too narrow. So I would expect that the geologists should be more open to the expectation of the society. And we have a very important role to play. If I'm coming back and zooming to the role of the survey and the, the geological survey of Switzerland or of Slovenia is an important, very important part uh, of, as an important role to play. Uh, we should archive, we should interpret, we should diffuse the information, but not only, we should have a national and regional coverage to understand. We should also be involved with strategic and development. As I present you the strategic development on land use planning in the underground, we should think at the long term. So we have a very important role that nobody else can cope with, nobody else, really. We're talking about research, research is fundamental. Uh, we have research project, but the sustainability on research is difficult to cope because the people are coming, they will be formed and they will be leaving. On a survey, the people, the employees will stay many years. So it will last, the knowledge will last for very long. And at the end, at the end, I think all the sustainable development is coupled with continuous development its education and so on. So that would be my three recommendations. Thank you so much for your attention.